In today's Sharp Saturday video, which by the way is going to be another Shrade Saturday video, we're going to take a look at a knife that I was not going to show you yet, but something happened that changed my mind, and so today we're going to take a look at the brand new Shrade Beta Class Uproar Double Action <laughs> Out the Front Knife. <laughs> That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me for another Sharp Saturday slash Shrade Saturday video where it's Saturday and we take a look at something sharp. As I said today, that something sharp is this brand new Shrade Beta Class Uproar Double Action Out the Front Knife. <laughs> Man, I like this thing already. So anyway, but we're gonna put this to the test. But first, big thanks to the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited, as always, for making a situation where you can support the channel and save money by going to survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU. Get signed up for your first month's trial membership at Big Daddy Unlimited for just 99 cents. Get in there, see how much money you can save. If you like it, and you stick around at the regular membership price of 10 bucks a month, then they'll throw me a couple of bucks for introducing you. So if you save money, it supports the channel. I like that. So uh, thanks again to Big Daddy Unlimited. So let's talk about this knife. But first, I said I wasn't going to show you this one yet. And I wasn't because I was going to start another little series, a little mini series about machetes. And I spent whew, a couple of three really, really hot, sweaty, humid hours in the woods last week filming uh, some machete videos. And I got back, started doing the editing, and somewhere in amongst all the chopping and hiking in the woods and all that, I uh, must have pulled a microphone cable loose or something. Man, I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me. And anyway, uh, as I was editing, I had a lot of missing audio. So <sighs> all that sweat for nothing. So we're going to have to kind of redo some of that. But I've, I've got this straight now that I really, I really wanted to show you. And I was kind of saving this one. This was going to be my, like, one of, one of my last ones I showed you. I've got four of these straight knives right now, but I like this so much and I thought, you know what? Let me just go ahead and show you this one because um, it's just too stinking cool. So that being said, uh, let's talk about this. So like I said, Shrade reached out to me and said they had some new designs. Wonder if I'd be interested in reconnecting. And I took a look at them and thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. So this is one of the beta class knives. Now they have the alpha class, which is all, are all made in the USA. And then the beta class consists of knives and tools, and this is what they say on their website, made in high-quality factories in countries such as Taiwan, Japan, Germany, and, of course, the United States of America. Um, so it says countries such as, I don't know if there's any other countries in there or not. Um, I know that they have the uh, Delta class, I believe it is, the third class, which, which is going to include most of their typically uh, Chinese-made, not knives made in Chinese factories. So they're going to be the, the more of the budget line. So, but this one is assembled in the USA. So in it, in um, the specs do not sound like a Chinese knife. So first of all, the closed length on this thing is four and a quarter inches long. Uh, the overall open length is, bam, <laughs> I like that, seven and can you is that focused? Come on, focus, grasshopper. It's seven and a quarter inches long, and the blade length is three inches long. The blade is D2 tool steel. The thickness is one tenth of an inch. It is a spear point. Looks like a double edge, but it's really not. Only one side is sharpened. It's a they call this a flat grind. I don't know why they call that. It's got that, it's got that that thickness in the middle and it goes down to the point. Um so satin finished. The handle material is black aluminum. I think they're going to have a, a um, flat dark earth one or a tan one also. The handle thickness is a half an inch, and it weighs 3.3 ounces. It's assisted double action out the front. I'm not sure what that means. I know a while back, like several years ago when I was doing a lot of straight reviews, they had this single action out the front. It was assisted opening, which basically it had a button. You push it. Once you locked it back and cocked it and locked it, basically you had to cock it and lock it. <laughs> then you, when you, you push the trigger, it would open. But then to close the blade, you had to pull this little thing all the way back and get it in a lock. And I didn't like it. I never liked it. Uh, that knife is the Viper. It's still on the website. It's part of the beta class, one of the beta knives now. Still there. Um, and maybe you're living in a place that does not allow you to have one of these. Then legally, I think technically that's an assisted opening. I'm not a lawyer, so 
Don't take legal advice from me, or really, I wouldn't take legal advice from anybody on the internet, but especially on YouTube. But um, this one is a true double action, which means you push the button up and opens, you pull the button back, and it closes. Open, close. Kind of like, um, what is that? The knife that the Joker had. I believe that was a bench made infidel, but um, that's about a $300 knife. This one's 99.99 street uh, MSRP, about an 85-ish dollar street price. I found it on several websites um, pre-order, but it's, it's so this one's I don't think is actually available yet. But let's take a little closer look at it, and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. So, it first of all, there's what the handle looks like, and it's got a pocket clip. The pocket clip is going to be tip down obviously so when you reach in your pocket and pull it out it's right where you need it now i don't know if this is reversible it doesn't say it is it doesn't look like it is but and it look, doesn't even this this thing's kind of a uh, offset on here a little bit i don't know how these mechanisms work i think they're pretty cool but uh to me that's just pretty neat so anyway um I thought we would do a little bit of testing. I don't know, there's, it's not, look, this is not a bushcraft knife. We're not going to baton this thing and carve feathers and start fires with it. It does not have any kind of a sharp spine or anything like that on it. Um, again, the edge, this side is sharpened, the bottom side, and the top side is a false edge. So, you know, there's so many different rules and regulations and restrictions on knives. I don't know to, to tell you where this is going to be legal, where it's not. Um, some places don't allow double-edged blades, right? Some places don't allow um, automatic knives. I, I can't imagine a place that would allow an automatic knife and not double-edged, but who knows? There's a crazy mixture of knife laws in, in the U.S., and I would recommend you join KnifeRights.org, which is um, pretty, pretty, pretty competitively priced to join, and Doug Ritter over there is working really hard to um, simplify and, and remove knife restrictions throughout America. Um, I remember when you could not have an automatic knife in Georgia, where I live, and now you can buy an automatic knife in Georgia, which is pretty cool. So anyway, let's do a couple of quick tests. First of all, I think we should do the pretty much worldwide industry standard sharpness test, the uh, redneck sharp test. So, so we're going to try that one with this. I don't know if it's going to make it or not. It feels pretty sharp, but let's just see. Let's get the old testing medium out and have a look. And okay, ooh, okay, wow, okay. Oh, I can feel it. So right there, the very, oh, man, that part right there, the curve right there is sharp enough. Um, and it was shaving pretty well. Right down here at the bottom, until it gets up to this curve, it wasn't. And if you can look at the look at the grind here on that, if you can see that, I'm just being straight. It's a little bit wider here. I think part of that is because it's thicker here, right? It's thicker, on, it's thicker on this part here. Once it gets down towards the end, it starts tapering and it gets thinner. So that means the angle of the of the the bevel of the blade is not as is not as um, as flat there. It's more it's steeper. The angle's sharper. So maybe that has something to do with it. I just I just know that out here on this part of the blade, it was shaving pretty well. Here on the flat part, it wasn't. So, but. There's another uh, semi-industry standard test that a lot of people like to see, and that's a paper test. So let's try that. You want to? Let's just see. Okay, so pretty good. It's better at the paper test on this part back here than it did with the uh, redneck test, sharp test. So one more time. Okay. <laughs> you know, I like, you've noticed I like doing that? So uh, we'll, we'll give it a, um, a C on the redneck sharp test because about half the blade worked, did it. And we'll give it a B, a B plus actually on the paper cutting test. So one of the things about these knives, um, and I had a really, really cheap $20 one one time that was, um, it was a letter opener. That's what it was. Look, people think this is some kind of, it's always about a weapon, always about a weapon. For me, a uh, one-handed knife is just so, so so convenient because if you got something in your hand you're doing you can pop it open pop it open use it and close it you don't have to have any kind of manipulation whatsoever like you can close 
this knife, okay? I can open this, this wave up, this Emerson wave, right? And it's open. When I go to close it, then I have to do a little bit of manipulation there, put my thumb there, get it moving. And if I'm not careful, I get it moving too fast, there's a potential for me to cut myself there. Ask me how I know. What I really like about these out the front knives is you don't have to touch anything to close it. You just push the lever back. So if you're opening boxes or letters or whatever you're cutting, cutting stuff with it, everyday stuff, you know, you got something in your hand, you open it up, do it, close it. It's nice and safe. And it looks cool. So anyway, I've got a box here. What I thought I would do is one of the things that happened with that cheap knife that I used to have, if you stab something too, put too much resistance on it this way, it would come, dis it would disconnect and you had to pull it out and lock it again. So I've got a piece of cardboard. I thought, well, let's just stab this and see what happens. It's a pretty heavy duty box. And then I got something special after that. So you ready? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, uh, not bad there. I mean, it's a cardboard box, right? But I've got this partially deflated old raggedy basketball here and I thought this might be at least a better test because it's going to be a little tougher so uh, I'm going to try to do this without cutting my hand that's what's important here I want to cut my hands I'm going to stab it like that you ready let's do it no problems now Something that a lot of people are concerned about is this thing opening in your pocket. Let's push it against this and see what happens when you pop it. Nothing. That's when it disconnects. So you have to sling it out and it works again. So if you're holding, if you're trying to hold this against something, say even something as soft as this foam. Now here's a piece of just styrofoam packing out of a box. First let's open it up. Not a problem, not a problem, right? But if you hold it against it and you push it, then it, it, it does not, the spring does not have a lot of force to like shoot this thing out. This is not a projectile device. So uh, at that point in time, you got this thing kind of stuck there. You got to just pull it out till it locks and that works again. So um, I think that's pretty standard. I have not tried a $300 Benchmade Infidel, so I don't know. This is about an $80 knife, but I know it stabbed the heck out of, out of a uh, basketball and still works just fine. <laughs> so, um, there you go. And, and, it's really cool. <laughs> okay, that's it. I, I just could not resist showing you this. But honestly, I couldn't find this anywhere online uh, as of the day I'm making this video, which I believe is August the 20th. Yeah, I don't believe, I know it's August the 26th, 2022. But this is coming very, very soon. And, this, uh, honestly, this knife here and the Made in the USA versions are the reason that I have kind of agreed to do some more charade reviews because I think um, I'm finally, I'm glad to see that. I really like that. That's cool. And I like the fact they're making some knives in the USA again. This one is assembled in the US. I don't know where the parts came from, but uh, either way, I think it's a very, very cool knife and... I'm happy to see something like this coming from Shrade now. So I hope this has been interesting and not too uh, too silly. And I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.